This was the Pinatubo we knew before it erupted in 1991. This is Pinatubo today. From a height of 5,725 feet, the 1991 eruption reduced it to 4,872 feet, a difference of 853 feet. But one million years ago, there was an ancestral Pinatubo that was more than 10,000 feet high. Its crater was twice as wide as the present crater lake. From satellite images, you could still see traces of that original crater. Scientists say that Mount Negron, Mount Dorst, Mount Tayawan, and the other mountains in the Zambales mountain range were mere vents of that mega volcano. And then, 35,000 years ago, Pinatubo had an eruption that can only be described as the mother of all Pinatubo eruptions. It was 10 times larger than the 1991 eruption. It buried the surrounding areas with pyroclastic flow deposits that were 325 feet thick. Pinatubo also erupted 19,000 years ago, 11,000 years ago, 7,000 years ago, 4,500 years ago, and 500 years ago. It was that last eruption 500 years ago that pushed the shoreline of Pampanga from its original location in Guagua to its present location in Makabebe and Sasmuan, which means that 200 years before the Spaniards came, the towns of Lubao, Sasmuan, Masantol, Makabebe, and Guagua were all underwater. They were all part of Pampanga Bay, which is part of Manila Bay. When the Spaniards came to Pampanga in 1571, they had no idea that Pinatubo had just finished erupting. When the Americans came 300 years later, they also had no clue that Pinatubo was a volcano, which is why they put up their largest Air Force base east of Pinatubo and their largest naval base west of Pinatubo. As for the early Kapampangans, they most probably knew because they had a legend involving Sinukwan of Mount Arayat and Namalyari of Mount Pinatubo throwing rocks at one another. Modern-day Kapampangans did not know what that legend meant until Mount Pinatubo erupted in 1991. But there was one people that had always known that Pinatubo was a volcano, the Aitas. They had a legend about a giant turtle digging a hole at the peak of Mount Pinatubo and in the process throwing rocks, mud, and dust all over the region and howling and producing fire from its mouth. But all these legends and clues disappeared over time until one fine day in April 1991 when residents on both sides of Pinatubo noticed white smoke rising out of the mountain. They were the first clear sign that the sleeping volcano had awakened once again. Why did Mount Pinatubo erupt in 1991? The quick answer to that question is because it was time. If we look at the record of previous eruptions, the periods 
surface parts had been progressively shortening. Look at the gaps between eruptions. 18,000 years followed by 8,000 years followed by 4,000 years followed by 2,700 years followed by 1,600 years the gap between 1991 eruption and the previous one was only 500 years. Was that the normal according to the record of progressively diminishing gaps between eruptions? Or was it premature by 500 or 1,000 years? To answer that question, let us see what happened before 1991. In 1982, the Philippine National Oil Company, or PNOC, started hydrothermal exploration on Mount Pinatubo to help solve the country's energy problem. Actual drilling started in 1988 and lasted until March 1990, only 15 months away from the 1991 eruption. The drilling stopped after engineers discovered the ground to be highly acidic. Aitas blame PNOC for the eruption, but to be fair, the drilling pipes reached only a maximum depth of 2.7 kilometers. The magma chamber was at least 6 kilometers below the surface. On July 16, 1990, or four months after PNOC packed up and left Mount Pinatubo, a magnitude 7.8 earthquake struck central and northern Luzon. Although the epicenter was in Nueva Ecija, it rattled the local fault systems beneath Mount Pinatubo. Two hours after the earthquake, a magnitude 4.8 earthquake struck the Mount Pinatubo area. It was not an aftershock from the major earthquake because it originated around Mount Pinatubo. Several more quakes were recorded on Mount Pinatubo and on August 4, 1990, a rumbling sound was heard near the mountain, followed by a landslide and smoke. Most newspapers reported it, but after Fivokes dismissed it, it was forgotten. Eight months later, on April 2, 1991, the same thing happened again. But a lot of precious time had been wasted. The eruption was only two months away. Department Kanita Magsadya kami naman kay coordination. <laughs> June 12, the first eruption happened on a beautiful morning of Independence Day. Also, it scared me. In fact, I uh, even called my sister who is based in Manila. I said, uh, I mean, why don't you come home to uh, San Fernando? Uh, there is a phenomenon happening right here and it's uh, this is something that you will never witness in your lifetime. <laughs> 
Muula ng bato. Kako, ano? This is the closest that I got. Kasi gagaloy ang gabon. Dadagundong. And the Lahar was coming in higher than the Rosaria compound. If you have seen the Ten Commandments, you will believe that you will now just believe that it can happen. After a few minutes, I'm going to go to the Congress. 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 I'm going to go to the Congress.